Grid 7, and here we have it. How often do you need a COVID booster shot? Yearly new data suggests. Healthy people should get an annual COVID-19 booster to prevent widespread outbreaks, suggests a new study from Yale University and University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Yearly shots provide just enough frequency to prevent huge outbreaks while not putting an undue burden on people. There seems to be an infection point at about a year, said senior author Jeffrey Townsend, a biostatistician and evolutionary biologist at the Yale School of Public Health. Delaying boosting beyond that point rapidly increases the risk of an infection. Uh, like, like how, no, the, they always say, no, the vaccine prevents infections. But we're going to see later on here in this article how that actually plays out. Uh, federal officials have suggested annual shots. Uh, the study is the first to examine the long-term outcomes from booster schedule and the first to show that boosters will be especially effective at intervals of no more than a year. The study published this month focused on people with healthy immune systems. Townsend and his colleagues are starting to work on a similar study looking at the optimal vaccine interval for people with weakened immunity from cancer treatment and other such health problems. What the study found. Annual shots prevent 75% of infections. But do they? Let's take a look here. I like this one. The researchers modeled the antibody levels against the virus that causes COVID-19. If someone's boosted with a Pfizer, Biotech, or Moderna vaccine every six months, one year, 18 months, two years, three years over that span. Boosting twice a year reduced infections by more than 93%, the team found. But Town said it's not realistic to ask people to get vaccinated that often. Annual shots prevented 75% of vaccinations while waiting more than six months reduced the rate of protection to just 55%. For healthy people, annual boosting makes a difference. Now They're, they're really hyping this up, you know, that getting your booster will prevent you from being infected. The booster has to keep evolving. The virus continues to evolve, so we need to continue to evolve the booster and keep it updated to the most prevalent variant. Yeah, I mean, last year we were had, what, how many different things? And now we're on uh, XBB15, which apparently is even more contagious and all that. Well, the latest booster directed the original coronavirus and the BA4 and 5. Notice no XBB15. And here's where we're, we're getting into the whole entire that 75% is going to look a lot less here if you read between the lines. The COVID-19 vaccines have side effects. A lot more than just making people feel miserable for a day or two, but let's ignore that part. But an infection can be much worse. No, I like that part. An infection can be much worse. Now this... Dornberg said, I, I like this little part right here. In his own case, he felt terrible for two days after his first round of shots. When he caught COVID-19, though, his lungs hurt for weeks and he was winded climbing a single flight of stairs. Hold on a second. Weren't you just telling me up above that uh, the vaccine per reduces your per ability to even get it? And yet, he felt terrible for doing no, it. Basically, he got double whammied. He both felt terrible, and he caught COVID and winded. It was awful. That calibrated me a little differently. Contracting COVID-19 does not provide protection against future infections. But like the vaccine, the protection fades over time. And again, the whole entire attack against natural immunity which I've actually now seen some reports, I forget where they were, but one uh, said no natural immunity was actually better. You can't end up in the hospital for an infection you don't get. It doesn't prevent you from getting it, though. This one, I like this. A year after someone is both vaccinated and infected, they have a 95% reduced risk of getting severe COVID-19 or needing hospitalization, the study showed. 
someone infected a year ago but not vaccinated had a 75% reduced risk. But you were just saying, I mean, do, are, are they actually listening to what they're saying here? It's getting infected and vaccinated reduces the chance of reinfection a year later by 42%. I mean, this whole entire thing, you not only need the vaccine, but you need to be infected to be really, and it, even then it doesn't last. And ask when, will the, when we get better vaccines, that we need durable vaccines that would last multiple years against all variants. Uh, we're not getting the traction we need on these science projects. There's not the will, the resources, the priority. That means if a worse variant at some point, the U.S. will have to be reactive instead of having all this ahead of time. And that would really be sad because we know the path to getting ahead of the virus and we're not doing it. One of these things, I'm, I'm going to say it, follow the money here. And I think the money you'll see will go back to these uh, pharmaceutical companies. But I don't know, what, what do you think? I, mean, I like how they sit there and they say no. The yeah, It was somewhere in the article where they were saying no. It prevents, basically, no, you're not going to get it. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that's really working. Is this just repeating the same old stuff? Let me know what you think on YouTube. Come on over to Rumble, and I'll see you next video.